Good evening everyone. So today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to put together a PDF pattern. This is the pattern that we're going to be working with today. This is the bodice block pattern. It's a kid's pattern. Something small to start off with. And I'm just showing you the basic details that this pattern does entail. I will link down below where I purchased this PDF pattern, which is from Etsy. She has a ton of basic patterns that you can modify into your liking she gives you a lot of details as far as you know the sizing and everything so be sure you take a look at that I always go with this size chart which is the finished garment measurements and I normally base which um, size I'm gonna need to print out off of this size chart um, I highly recommend doing that because this will include the seam allowance that you add to your fabric um, so that way you know which side will work best this will give you just a general layout of what your pattern should look like after you put everything together and yeah very very informative she's very open um, she keeps open communication if you have any questions or concerns, but none of her patterns include like actual instructions So you kind of have to have an idea of how to work PDF patterns So this is what your pattern will look like it will be labeled It'll have a test square and basically what the test square does is it allows you to test out the dimensions to be sure that it is to scale so this is what i'm doing here i'm taking my measuring tape and i am making sure that my measuring tape matches the one inch test square that she has here it's also in centimeters if you have to have a centimeter ruler or something um that test square will be five centimeters by five centimeters so it actually works and my pattern is to scale so I did want to show you that she also color codes her patterns. Um, that's very, very good to note. If you have multiple patterns that you are putting together, it's easier to differentiate which pattern is which. So I always cut out at the end. I cut out the um, that table that shows you uh, which size correlates with which color. So this is what it'll look like. It'll start with a one, a two, a three, a four, and so forth and so on, depending on how large your pattern is. This only has five um, pages to each row. So I have a one through a five, and then the second row is B1 through B5. All right, so now I'm just separating it row by row. So I have my A's in one stack, and then I have my B's in another. I'm just gonna put my B's on, on the side here. So I have a paper cutter that I purchased from Office Depot. Um, I will link it down below. Um, you can basically find these on Amazon, Walmart, um, Michaels anywhere really and then I also have a pair of pattern scissors You want to be sure that you do not use your fabric scissors on your pattern So make sure you have a separate pair of pattern scissors um, So we're basically going to start with the first page here um, And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut along the black line on the far right here really really close to that black line you want to cut that off so with this first row that's all you're going to do with every one of your pages is cut that um, that right side off so I'm going to start with a one I am going to set my paper cutter up I'm going to place my paper cutter where it needs to go and once it is aligned if you don't have one of these, don't be alarmed. You do not have to use one of these. The scissors are just fine. 
before I purchased one of these, I was using scissors. And even sometimes after I use this, I still find myself using scissors to just straighten up the, the cut of the line a little bit more. Because sometimes I do leave a little um, paper on it. Kind of like this one. I'll have to go back and cut that off a little bit. But this is basically what you'll do. is You're going to cut off the far right section on each page. So you're just going to go each page at a time cut it off and yeah that's pretty much it for the first row Just wanted to hop on here and say the last page of each row you don't necessarily have to cut off that far right but you can if you want to all right now we are starting with the second row which is B and for this row we're still gonna cut off that far right section so we're gonna cut along that black line but on this particular row we're also gonna cut the top portion I know it's not a lot on there but trust me that portion makes a difference you need to cut that off so you're going to cut off the top and you're going to cut off the far right on every page that last page of the row you don't necessarily have to cut off the far right but you definitely need to cut off the top so do that on every page All right, so both rows are cut and prepped, and now we are about to put everything together. So the things you'll need to put your pattern together is some clear tape. Any kind of brand is, works fine. I normally get mine from Dollar Tree. You want some pattern scissors. You want your pre-cut patterns. You just want to go through each one and make sure that it's cut properly make any adjustments to it if you need to so I'm gonna start with my first row which is row a and what you're going to do is take into consideration your semicircles here um, your quarter circles you're gonna match these quarter circles up you're gonna align them up um, and it should make a half circle if it's aligned correctly. You don't really want to overlap your lines that you cut, but you want them to be very, very, very close. Once you align it to where it needs to go, you want to be sure you secure it with a piece of tape. So I normally secure it at my circles first. 
So at the top and at the bottom. And then once everything is secured at the circle, I will also secure a piece of tape right there where my pattern meets where I'm going to cut. So that when I cut, I don't lose my pattern in the process. So I want to be sure you secure your pattern um, with tape as well. So you're just going to continue this on. You're going to attach A5 to A4 and then A4 to A3. Making sure that you are putting those quarter circles together, forming half circles. And you're going to continue that on down the entire row secure and use as much tape as you need tape untape make sure you line it up and if it's done correctly your pattern will seamlessly just fall into place um take it slow it's not a race just be sure that it is as accurate as possible because it makes a difference when you use this pattern um, for your garment so you want to be sure that you are being very precise very accurate and it's coming together seamlessly. Alright, so now that you're done with the first row, you're basically going to do the same to your second row. You're going to match your quarter circles together, forming um, half circles, and you're going to align as you see here. So I have my second row complete, and it looks something like this. So now we're going to attach the top row, or the uh, second row to the top row. Alright, so now that you have row A and row B, you are basically going to do as you did um, before. You're going to align your semicircles and you're going to attach it. So you need to be sure that A5 aligns with B5, A4 aligns with B4, A3 with B3, so on and so forth. So when you attach your circles this time, it should form a full circle if it does not you need to go in and you need to adjust your pattern if you find that the circle is um, shaped awkwardly you need to go in and adjust your pattern it should fit perfectly just like it does here and again when I match my circles together I go ahead and secure it with a piece of tape so that it does not move you want to be sure you go down the entire row, matching circle to circle, pattern to pattern, page to page. Secure at your circles, secure at your pattern, use as much tape as you need, take your time, attach, detach, do what you need to be sure that your pattern is seamless and looks professional. Okay, once you're done, it is basically time to cut your pattern out. So just, I like to cut very close to the line, piece by piece. So I'm starting with my uh, sleeve first, and then I cut out my back bodice, my front bodice, and then I'm just going to start cutting each piece um, as it should be cut. So I just take note of my line here. And I am going to cut really, really close to that line um, to finish off my pattern. So just take it slow, cut along your pattern. Um, you want to be sure that you still can see your line, but it's still close enough. Um, 
and you're just going to go around your entire pattern just like this each piece you're going to cut out just like that All right, so now you have your patterns cut out. You should have your back bodice cut. And just take note that seam allowance is not included here. So when you cut it out on your fabric, please be sure that you include seam allowance. And that's where that finished garment um, chart came in. If you add the seam allowance to it, that's what it'll... Um, end up being but I find it very imperative that you label your patterns by the size that it is so I went ahead and labeled each pattern piece by the size so that if I put it up somewhere or you know um, the pieces are not together I'll know which one goes with which so tape is very 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 fundamental as well as your fabric scissors and your markers you'll need this for this project and your paper cutter if you have if you want to like again you don't have to scissors are just fine but these are the tools that I ended up using for the entire project this is the brand and again I'll link it down below if I can find it online for you guys And you are basically done. So use your pattern, modify it, and use it for what you need to use it for. I ended up making a child's um, little overpiece, and you'll see it in probably the next clip. 